that you need to have to complete the vision that you've been given. So uh, you be careful uh, with your friends. I mean, your friends love you. It's not that they don't, but some of them just don't have the vision you have, and they're not able to help you accomplish that uh, just by being a friend. So people, you need to get to people that's going to uh, give you a different way of looking at what you want to do so that you can make some comparisons. Absolutely. Amen? Amen. All right. um, before I say about my vision, I do want to speak to that because the, the friends I have, I thought I was like-minded. <laughs> then I met Jill, and I met Rita, and I met all these other women who challenged my way of thinking. So that was good because it was what spoke to me and through me was my spirit and their spirit connected. But I had to grow up in those other areas that I just didn't have it all together, and I thought I did. But when you meet someone who's at a, a higher spiritual level and, your, and becomes your teacher and your mentor, that pulled me up to a higher level of thinking. So I thought I was at my highest level of thinking till I met some of these other women, and they brought me up which is a great thing because the like-mindedness didn't come first for me because I thought I was already thinking a certain kind of way. But my vision, and I'm older than um, the other two panelists. My and you're older than me too. Okay, <laughs> see, see right there, that's what I see, see right there. Thank you, Lord, for the example. <laughs> Some of the other two, three. Right <laughs> well, go there, ahead. see y'all, more level up. <laughs> Remy Ma, but um, <laughs> they can't stop me because I'm all the way up. <laughs> That's my motto, Anita, tell you that. But what you couldn't tell me that my vision wasn't, like Shamia said, wasn't not to have children. You couldn't tell me I wasn't going to have a husband. You couldn't tell me I wasn't going to have a good job and all those other things. And you, could, you just couldn't tell me. And so as I began to grow older and began to also grow older spiritually, and I thought about my vision more, and I, I was looking at those things through my eyes. But when I began to look at my vision through God's eyes, and so though no children, I have children. They came by way of other people. So when I saw that with the young ladies that I mentor, with the children that I mentor, God had to help me with my thinking that way. Mm -hmm. And looking at it through God's eyes. So I have young ladies, some of the ladies in here that I mentor, Eden, and some of the other young ladies here. So I have all these children, but when I saw it through my own eyes, then I could get uh, discouraged. Then I could say, oh, I didn't have a baby. Oh, I didn't have children, and all these other women have them. But that vision was my own natural vision. But there was a spiritual vision that was greater. And so I like that, that I learned that about myself. I didn't always have it that way, didn't always see it that way. But when I found out and God began to talk to me and encourage me that way, I saw it differently. And it was such a blessing. And you couldn't tell me that I wasn't going to be, I wanted to be um, a writer, a spiritual teacher, um, all those things. Uh -huh. When I stop and think about it, I'm asking that uh, Jill and Lenita know everywhere I go, I run my mouth. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> I See? <laughs> Everywhere I we and we we try to walk on the other side of the street because Gail I'm got a new you. best friend. <laughs> Everywhere we go, I'm saying, listen now. Yes, my new best friend. I'll be like, what's your name again, baby? We trying to go eat. <laughs> <laughs> we trying to go eat. I used to run away from that. That's true though. You should try to go eat. That's true. So I'm gonna save my this other answer for Jill's. Gonna, I mean, and Mom's gonna answer this other answer this other question. I'm gonna save that story for later because I tried not to do that one time, and I'm gonna tell you. I, mean, I can't wait to tell you that story, but go ahead. And before you go, let, let me say this, just one piece that, that has helped me that, I, that, that, that is my go-to when it comes to keeping my vision, whether it's Deron, whether it's a good friend, whether it's my daughter, whether it's my mother-in-law, uh, members, this is, what, this, this is my go-to. Whenever I'm trying to figure out whether I'm dealing with somebody who's like-minded, because remember, sometimes you're with a person that's like-minded, but then when they start going through life and have trials, 
their own mind, they're, they're, they're kind of out of sorts with themselves. So they, it starts that way, but it takes a turn. And that turn may not be a permanent turn. That term, turn is just what someone has to go through to get through what they have to go through. I used to tell Kanye all the time, child, you ain't live long enough. Mm. Well, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what is going on. Kanye, when you, you ain't live long enough. When you live long enough, I'm telling you, you're going to, find, you're going to see things so much differently. So this, that's why we can say you, after a while, you'll think that you lost your vision because it feels blurred or you, you think you're not doing it because you've changed. And some of these visions that we built, we built from our six selves. So then now we go look at the world with the eyes of clarity. So here's my go-to. Jesus and his very best friend, I'm called Peter, his best friend, his bestie. And this is what Jesus said when his bestie was still, listen, remember this, Peter was going to become, was the rock. He was all of that. But at a moment in his life, he was off. And this is, what, this is what I do. When I'm talking to somebody and they don't have the things of God in mind, I know that we're going to pause this one. This is what Jesus said to Peter. Peter, Satan, get behind me. What he's saying is you, you're, you're an obstacle to my vision. You're an obstacle to me finishing what I started because at this point I know what I have to do and you're trying to feel sorry for me. You're, you're, you're sitting in the wrong kind of sympathy. I'm all, listen, so Jesus is telling Peter, listen, I'm going to have to die. This is what I'm getting ready to go through. So he's sharing this with his closest people. Those were his disciples. And when you know you got to do something hard, like when you had to divorce somebody that we all love, how do you handle, you know, you have to handle that uh, uh, or be handled with the understanding that this ain't easy for you. So if I take that back to Jesus and Peter, don't think that Jesus dying and knowing you're going to die just because you know you're going to die, it doesn't mean you're going to like what you're going to have to do and go through. And at that moment, a person with, who's in tune, a person who's in tune, you'll know them because they'll, they'll understand that about you. I know that I've had two years of cancer threatening my closest, my family because of what my husband was going through. And I knew who to be on the phone with based on anybody who did not understand that for me it was the most fearful time mm -hmm. in my life. And I need anything in my space that didn't understand where I was. So this is what Jesus and Peter are going through. Peter, you, 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 you're having small talk. I just told you I'm going to die. You're having small talk. That's how, I know you ain't, that's how I know you ain't in tune with God. Not right now. Why was that? Because Peter did not want to hear Jesus say, I'm going to die, because Peter thought that Jesus came to get those Romans off of their backs. And he knew if you die, these people are going to come and bully me and do all the things they was doing. But when you're here, we feel safe. And he felt like, I'm not going to feel safe. So he thought he might talk Jesus out of that mission, that vision. So what is my go-to? Is it a permanent mark? No, it is not. But my go-to is always, do you have the things of God in mind? If you don't have the things of God in mind, then it's not the best time. Does that make sense to you? Because there's always going to come a time when you're going to have to have that discernment, Shamia. The discernment in Hebrew 5 will tell you that discernment is this, and it talks about milk and meat. And it says that a person who lives on milk or a person who is able to take meat by way of constant use of the word, mm -hmm. they teach themselves to discern good from evil. Mm -hmm. How do I discern good from, How do I know that this space right here is not a good space or this space right here is not a good space? I don't look to me for that. 
I have to come out and say, what is God's agenda in this? What is, where is God in this? As my mother-in-law said, do we have a vision? Do, do, do we have a vision of God? And what I've learned over the years, after going through that, after I learned over the years to sit back and see that when you have someone who's going through, who, are, who is like-minded, when people go through, they are in their own warfare. Mm -hmm. So now you have to also remember they're in their own warfare and you in your own warfare. And at that point, there ain't no labels. There's no, I'm through. It is not right now. And that's all God wanted Eve to understand. Don't eat off this tree. Not right now. Just wait. Eve, I'm going to give you the wisdom. But you're going to get that wisdom through experience. I'm going to allow you to live life. What did it say in another Hebrew chapter, 45? It says this, Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered. So I got to let you suffer because more than me giving you wisdom, I want you to be obedient. So when you go through, I know you want out and I know you want to understand. And I know that you want all of that as women. You just want to know what's going on. But that same suffering is going to teach you obedience to the Father. And it said, and Jesus prayed with loud cries and to God. He did that to the one who could save him. He didn't do that. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't it wasn't to his disciples. It wasn't his real sister or his play sister. But he went straight in and understood, Father, you're the only one that knows exactly what's going on. And with loud cries and moans, and he talked to the only one that could save him. And it said, through that suffering, he learned obedience. Through all of what they're going through, what Ashley's saying, Gail's saying, what Shamir's saying, at the end of the day, he's going to turn that into something, and you're going to be able to learn obedience. But that's a discernment. It comes from practicing what God said, practicing being in his presence, practicing casting your own thoughts, it's practice, 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 practice. And after a while, you'll be able to discern when the spirit is off. That's why I'm now at the place where he has allowed me to become, to grow into the place where now I can do it because all I can do is sit back and check my breath. I used to check outside of me. Is she all right? Is he all right? Is she all right? Mm -mm. Now I just get to sit back. Say, check your breath. Where are you? Why do you feel this way? What, what is this space really like? And where is God in this space? Where is he? <laughs> Not how I feel. Where is he? It's funny you should mention that where is God in this space? And we've all been in spaces where we're not happy. It's not working. Mm -hmm. And we had that question, where is God in this space? But that's not the time to curse that space. Right. That's go. not the time to even rehearse, to rehearse it. Oh, boy, what's going on? Why am I going through this? Here I go again, and it ain't never going to be right. Oh, who is me? Anyway, don't rehearse it. And what we have to learn to do is reverse it. Mm -hmm. Turn that thing around. It just made me think about what I went through many years ago when I was taking the bar exam. Mm -hmm. Jill, that was some of the hardest time in my life. I mean, I shut my life down for three years. Mm -hmm. Every year I'm studying to pass this bar. And then I'd get just a few points away and fail. And I'm studying books that are thick like this. And I gotta memorize all this stuff. And I kept saying, you can do it. You, you know, like the train, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> you can do this. Other people I know was passing it and and first time out, second time out. So I went three separate times, three years of my, I leave my family and go off to places by myself. 
stay in hotels by myself just to have that time to do this. Well, third time, still didn't, came really close that time. And folk kept saying, go again. I said, no, I'm not doing that again. I'm not shutting down my life like that again. <coughs> you ever shut down your life for something? I'm not shutting down my life like that no more. That's it, I'm not doing that. So I had to now to reverse mm -hmm. my direction. What, what do I do? And so I began to do other things. I began to focus on ministry. I began to do things for other people. I began to reverse what I had left <clears throat> because I knew what God wanted out of my life. Now, can I, I want to ask her a question because I, I think I know something, but I have to put in a question for her. Was being an attorney what you wanted to be when you were younger? Of course not. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. This, let me tell you why I'm saying that. Because, but helping people. Yes. So God had to fail you to pass you. That's where I was going. Oh, exactly where you? I'm sorry. where I was going. Well, you were taking too long. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's exactly I'm sorry. where I was going. Because <laughs> I'd been in ministry ever since then. It was either children's ministry that I had devoted my life to for 25 years and loved it, loved it, loved it. And now it's prison ministry that I devoted myself to over 30 years. Love it, love it, love it. And they never hired you, uh, right? No. Uh, no, no, no. See, I'm saying this because I got people listening. No, for 30 years, she's been going to the same prison. See, I'm saying that because sometimes, Ambition gets in the way of a call. I didn't say God didn't provide for her some way. I'm saying that being there for 30 years, at some point you think that I ought to be running this joint by now. This is how we get off because then yes. the world comes in yes. and says, you've been there longer. Yes. The people know you better. Yes. They come in, they telling you what to do, and you think, that somehow um, God has revised his vision for you. So it's a hard thing. But I, I want to say this because she, you took us into a question that I, I want you to answer, and then I want you all to answer it. And this is what it was. How do, it was two things. What do you do when a particular thing does not turn out the way you would have liked? You just answered that. You said what you did. It didn't turn out the way you liked. You went on. But now the other one is how do you feel? Well, I that? felt... I felt disappointed. I felt at some sense that, you know, I had failed with all of that going to school and everything. And okay, come on now. Let's listen. Since your husband, I know him personally, uh, <laughs> was an attorney, is yeah. an attorney. Okay. He saw partnership. Because remember, he, I'm sure he saw partnership. But the, the, the revelation to that is one day I'm heading to court to file paperwork because I could do everything right. that I needed to do, you know. And the Lord spoke to me and said, now just think about it. If you had passed the Maryland bar, your husband would have taken over your life. That's and all I'm you, trying to say. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. You would have worked yours he would have worked you. I never wanted to go and do trials. Never. I would assist him in it, but never wanted to do trial. And it, it, it just, just as clear, I'm driving down the road heading to the court. He said, you could be heading right now to do a trial. That something you hated, you did not want to do. He said, so I spared you. I spared you. Be thankful. Be grateful for disappointment sometimes. Be grateful that you don't always get what you want. You don't always get what you like. And you feel bad about it. 
But you got to know that there, God's working in it. He's, well, I didn't see that for years, that he was working in it. But so when he started working in it, I began to pour out my heart, do what I was called to do right from there. a child. Right there. When I was from a child. And from what my mom had told me when I first applied and got accepted at law school, she was afraid. She said, oh, my Lord. She said, are you sure? I don't think I want you to make, look, oh, my Lord. Reverend Gilmore. <laughs> she mother. said, I'm afraid it's going to affect your love for people. I'm afraid it's going to turn you away from the love that God planted in you for people. And that sort of scared me. I went on with it anyway, but the whole time I'm praying, Lord, you got to help me use this some kind of way and, and can I to say help this? people. I, I want you all to, to see the other pieces to this. So now you have to live in a house mm -hmm. with a person who thought they knew what was best for your future. <laughs> oh, listen, if you ain't old enough, you will go through this if you get married, okay? Because men have beautiful minds and big ideas for the whole family. <laughs> yes, for the indeed. whole family, yes, especially indeed. when they have a bright, intelligent wife who and he sees how she uses her mind. And, and you know, men are always trying to figure out, how, you know. How they can use your mind. How, well, that will never stop. I am still being asked, have you seen this? Have you seen that? I'm saying, listen, have you seen your mind? I want a break. But anyway, let me ask them, Mom. Th thank you for that. That was so, so rich. That was so rich. So, something disappointing. How did you feel? How did you process those feelings? And what did you do? For me, I'll answer the question. Jill said it earlier. I had to go through my divorce, put my daughter out, my house, dealing with some struggles at work. How did I feel? I had to come in here and I felt like I had to face all of you. What is everybody going to think about me? Not, nobody knew it was me that wanted the divorce. But I also had to tell myself the truth. I sat with a lady, you guys may not know her, her name is Asia Stoddard. <laughs> and she always sat with me and said, what does God say? What is God saying? She would never tell me what to do. She would just say, what is God saying? I mm. said, Asia, I want to hear that. I want to hear that. And she would pray for me. She said, I'll call you later. And I sat and I told myself the truth about my situation. And some of you may not like it, but the truth is, I never wanted to be married. I never wanted to be married. And in me never wanting to be married, I was a failure when I said I do. So I had expectations. So when she say about in the house, that was me. I had ideas for my husband. I walked in and said, how this going to look? How we going to do things? OK, you going to be a stepfather to her, and this is, this is what you going to do, and we're going to take your graphic business, too. And I had vision for my marriage, and he or my daughter or the rest of the family was not a part of it. And so I told myself the truth about that, and I came to the conclusion of divorce. And that was the hardest, hardest decision for me. I found the cause, and now I have the effect. I'm ex ex exhaling now because I'm now walking in my truth about I'm okay with not being married. I'm open to dating. I am open to dating. But if I never, ever, ever get married, I have a house, I have a child, I travel the world, I do my life. I'm okay with that. If he comes, he comes. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. So I'm okay with it. And now the other thing is, y'all, you and Van, Van is an excellent, mm -hmm. you are really good friends. You know, I called him, y'all talking up one day, and I just put him to the side. I said, Van, what's going on? <laughs> y'all had some eyes. I saw some eyes. Did I see eyes? He said, no, Jill, we're real good friends. I said, you sure I didn't see eyes? <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, you didn't see those eyes. But what I did see is eyes of somebody who loves somebody. And respect. He loved her. He loves her. And, it, and not married to her, he still loves her. And I said, so Jill, this is where your mind has to shift. 
to um, what you are used to seeing when people separate. And Van loves me and I love Van. Mm -hmm. And one of the messages that came across the pulpit from Jill was, love ain't got nothing to do with marriage. Love don't have anything to do with marriage. And he's my friend. He's mm -hmm. my friend. I don't know what God has in the future. I well, thought I, I saw some eyes. <laughs> I knew I saw some eyes. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> you know she a prophet. No. no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm saying. I, I'm saying before I wasn't open because again I never wanted to be married. Mm -hmm. Before I was, if anybody has talked to me, I ain't getting married. I ain't. I don't ever want. Y'all can have it. I was. I was uh, so against it. Today I stand and say I'm open to dating, and. Mm -hmm whether it's Van or whoever, I'm okay with where I am, with self-awareness and where I am Amen. with myself. That's key, self-awareness. Wonderful. Um, Go ahead. Come I on. know for me, I wanted to get married, um, and I don't know if you all heard the message one day Jill was talking about. She was sharing with someone to, you know, find someone that have a committed kind of personality, a yes. committed kind of way, and I thought I found that person. I was dating him, and things was going well. And it didn't turn out the way I wanted. And mm -hmm. then I met someone after him. And that person asked me to marry him. And I said, yes, we had worked together 20 years prior, so we bumped into each other. And I thought, OK, this is it. You know, he asked me to marry him. I said, yes, right away, because I was already ready for marriage. I thought I was ready for a relationship. So I, I acted upon that, not knowing all about him from 20 years ago to where he is right now and how he knows me now. So. Um, I, not just um, certain things that I had expectations of a man to get married, but there were certain things I just didn't want to do, and I guess we call them um, when you, uh, what you call them um, when you don't want to do something, uh, deal breaker. Uh -huh. So, and it's not always the obvious things. Mine was because of my personality. I just didn't want to deal with anyone who had reach. That affected me when I was a little girl in the home when my mom would go off and it would make me nervous. Just didn't like it. I didn't know that about me, which is why I became a people pleaser, because I wanted to just keep everything calm. Tell everybody where, 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 where he would build that rage. What was happening? <laughs> uh, what, what, what? We were, I mean, at the most not so good place. We were in the public in BJ's. And I am that not person you should do that with. Because that's the worst thing you can do to me is holler, scream, and all of that, and in a public place. Privately, maybe I can handle it better or differently, but definitely not. I just don't, I can't handle that. Emotionally, I can't. But this is the man I said, okay. And I told him, I'm not having sex before marriage. He was like, well, I don't know if I can do that. So he broke it off. And he thought about it more, thought about me, and said, hey, I want to try it with you. I thought, whoa, this is great. <laughs> Lanita was happy for me. We told <laughs> <laughs> she was told Jill. And this is the thing. We, it was the day Jill was having a workshop at that, um, what's that uh, place? Epiphany. Epiphany. So he was helping me gather things. I was in charge of bringing the food and stuff. And so he was helping me do all that and get that. We went to BJ's to buy all this bulk stuff so I could take it. I'm thinking, he helping me with Jill stuff? Y'all know I'm happy about that. <laughs> you helping me help my woman of God? You in. <laughs> so we went to BJ's and the lady said, okay, you got to take a picture. And so I said, okay. He said, well, I'm not taking no picture. I did a joke, I thought. I said, oh, well, you can't take, you a criminal? <laughs> he stood up six foot tall like this and I'm this short. What you think? People, nah, 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 nah. that's what's wrong with you, black women, blah, 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 blah. And people were around. I went into a trance. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what. I was not there. <laughs> My body was there, but I was floating. <laughs> I was like, Lord, what Jill said that last time she was preaching, you ever been somewhere and you said, oh, Lord, if you get me out of this? <laughs> I was doing that 100 times on the board. Lord, if you get me out of this. Lord, and I was looking up at him. Lord Jesus, if you get me out of this. Yeah. But Jill gonna kill me. I gotta get this stuff back to the car. <laughs>